So we're going to cut some test audio first with the Neumann SX-74 cutter head. Okay. Uh, the test audio is going to consist of 1K tones that are in phase and out of phase, as well as a track that I wrote with my friend Chris Grosky, aka K-Rad. I'm going to show you on screen the resulting cut. So as you can see I've got my super expensive trip to the hardware store and, uh, and a $9.99 webcam. And uh, we've got that hooked up here. You know, it doesn't show anything right now, but it will. And uh, so here we go. We are going to cut today at 300 lines per inch approximately. And uh, this is at 45 RPM. You can see that. Uh, we're going to do about a three and a half mil groove, somewhere around there, three, three and a half mil. Uh, it won't be visible on the scope. Unfortunately, I tried very hard to get the webcam to actually show the area of the scope that has the, uh, you know, the actual, uh, etching in it for the ruler, but unfortunately no go on that. Um, but, you'll be able to get the idea. And then you can kind of see it. But I mean, you just can't see it enough to make a measurement accurately, but again, these are about three mil grooves. Oops. So we'll get it to stay in focus here. And then let's start the 1K. And this is 1K in phase. Okay, that's done. And uh, I'm going to put a track spacer in right now. Okay. And now I'm going to skip ahead to the next tone, so that'll start going. And I mean, I know you don't see a lot because, you know, the turntable's spinning at the moment, so it's hard to tell with 1K really uh, that they're moving, but they are, absolutely. And I mean, I know I'm seeing, you know, I've got... Definitely, I've got volume on everything. I'm not cutting super loud. So we'll check these out. And I'll go back and I'll cut them louder so that you can actually see what the difference is. I'm going to put a locked groove in by raising the arm right here to disengage the pitch motor from the carriage arm, which then creates... A, instead of a concentric circle, I mean, instead of a concentric spiral, it creates a circle, and you wait, it's easy to tell with dubs, you wait one and one quarter revolution, and that creates a locked groove, everybody. So that's how that's done, is the operator simply pulls this up, waits for one and one quarter revolution, pushes it all the way back, which on a Neumann system, will actually engage the automatic head releaser. So, just to demonstrate, Right now, if I were to push this back, you'll see, pop. So, we're all stopped. And I will stop here. 
Okay. We'll back it up a little bit. So that is the track spacer that I put in in between the first two uh, sets of tones. These are all 1K tone. Oop, let me get over a little bit. This is 1K tone that is in phase. In phase meaning it's going to do this. Both sides of the groove are going to follow each other in an S pattern is what you see and because it's 1k you know it's not it's not um, a really drastic looking S pattern so again about a 3 mil groove here 300 lines per inch that is what a 1k tone looks like that is in phase this is what a 1k tone looks like that is out of phase okay Now what you're seeing is sort of, if you will, uh, you know, an hourglass shape to the grooves that are being cut. And of course I've got a pitch computer, so that's why they're able to nest the way that they're, they're nesting. Um, so, the point I'm trying to make is, in-phase information uh, is actually going to cause not the S curve but sort of this widening and thinning of the individual grooves and what's important there is that they're not only widening and thinning in a lateral sense they're also widening and thinning in and out of the screen here they're widening and thinning in a vertical sense as well so what we're gonna do is cut some more test tone here and we're gonna make it louder and then we're also going to cut some high pitch and we're going to take a look at that out of phase because it makes a very, how can I say, unique fingerprint that we're looking for, that we're going to look for when we do test cut with Blade Runner. Because I want to see the same sort of vertical pinching that is very prominent in high frequency grooves. I want to see that with the next test cuts with Blade Runner, which is what we're going to do. So stay tuned. Okay, so we've done our test cuts here with tone. This is all sine waves. Uh, these are now 1K at almost double the volume level. So before, you could see, uh, you know, there's a little bit of wiggling to these grooves. You can see right there. Oops. But, uh, once you raise the volume, of course, the excursion is going to be larger. The amplitude is larger. And so now we see a lot of shaking. Look at that shimmying. Beautiful. And of course, because the left and the right wall of each one of these grooves is following each other, these are in phase. So in phase 1K. Uh, and this was cut, yeah, I think we were peaking, you know, or not peaking, but I mean, staying constant right around there. And uh, we were at 200 lines per inch this time around. And again, 45. And uh, so now let's take a look at its complement. Let's take a look at the same thing, but out of phase. Oh, look at that. Now we get the pinching effect. So this is all out of phase information, which funny, oddly enough, if you know anything about the way cutter heads work, stereo heads, uh, it's actually inside of the head electrically, it's actually in phase. Uh, you have to electrically wire one of your transducers reversed to the other so that when you give it uh, in phase information, it moves the two pistons in opposite directions such that the resulting groove looks like this because the only way to get a groove that looks like this is if your left and right transducers are actually moving out of phase 
So to create a groove that appears in phase for in phase audio, you actually have to re reverse one of your transducers. So um, mechanically speaking, every stereo cutter head is actually functioning out of phase, <laughs> given in phase information. I figured that would be an interesting tidbit for people. So again, here's the out of phase. The interesting thing to note is that, you know, again, you're getting this pinching here, but it's also pinching here. So let's take a look at high frequency information because that's when it really starts to become prominent. This is now 3.5K, so 3,500 cycles per second, right? And we see, of course, that it's wiggling quite a bit, you know, more regularly now. So that's the end phase. And this, oh, glory land, this is the out of phase. And out of phase with higher frequencies, the hallmark of that is what you're seeing right here. And here and here and here and here and here and all everywhere else. You are actually now starting to see that vertical pinch, which is not as apparent on the bass, even though it's happening, because for sure, if you don't do bass summing, you have problems with playback. The tone arm will skip out of the groove because of that vertical pinch. It's sort of a vertical lift, and in that sense, it's more like a gradual ramp. Right here, though, for sure, what you're seeing, I mean, you're actually seeing it. You're seeing the grooves have this sort of, you know, extra character to them. So that's what we're going to be looking for primarily when I do test cut with the, the Blade Runner 1B here, is I want to see on high frequency information absolutely I, I want to be able to see that sort of pinching effect there on the grooves because if I don't get that you know I'm not getting vertical motion which means that my 4545 system though it's quote working is not working correctly uh, without vertical motion you're losing information and you're also losing a lot of volume because any movement of the stylus on playback, either laterally or vertically, is, is causing, you know, signal to be generated. And if you are not generating signal in one of those directions, you're getting half volume. So, you know, though things might work, they might not be working correctly. And the only way to tell if they're working correctly is to do what we're doing right here. And actually really very closely look at the grooves and read them and make sure that we're seeing the things that we need to be seeing. So I'm going to cut some, uh, you know, of a, an actual track right now so that we get some more varied information instead of just, you know, sine wave. And uh, I, then I'm going to perform all of these same cuts with Blade Runner and we'll compare the two. So we're cutting a K-Rad and Upcode 66 track here with the Neumann. You can see, just watching it as it goes. This miracle of engineering, the Thano, K-Rad, and Upcode 66. 